Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's series of lectures where we delve now into another branch of philosophy, the philosophy of ethics. So last week, we spent a lot of time looking at the philosophy of free will. And in particular, we watched the movie Minority Report to see how the film explores and plays around with the various arguments for and against free will we learned about in class. Now, hopefully you recognize that there are some ethical concerns that are also worth talking about from uh, that are raised by the movie. And in particular, for your paper that's coming due, I ask you the question of whether or not you would support a pre-crime program if precogs existed. So here is a, a unit of the police department that's able to stop murders before they happen. That seems like a good thing. And when they stop the murderers, they put the murderers in these halos and then put them away. However, there is the possibility that they may not have actually committed the crime because of the existence of minority reports. And we use precogs in an interesting fashion in order to get a sense for that future. And there's the whole idea that if, if their particular crime did not have a minority report, that means they really didn't have free will to commit the crime, which brings into question whether or not they're actually even morally culpable to the extent that we give them a sort of punishment. So hopefully you recognize there are a lot of ethical issues, ethical concerns that you'd want to think about before deciding on whether to support this pre-crime unit. But what exactly do we mean by ethical issues? What do we mean by ethical concerns? Every day you face a choice, whether you know it or not, that has ethical implications. There's some that are more obvious than others, like if you're walking down the street and you see children who are obviously homeless, what you do next is an ethical choice. Do you stop to help? Do you talk to them? Do you leave them alone? Do you just keep walking? You know, obviously this doesn't have to be with children either. This can be with anybody. There are people around the world that are in unfortunate circumstances, and to the extent that we do something or not do something about it, that's an ethical choice. So we have an intuitive sense for what ethics might be referring to, right? In the philosophy of ethics, just like with all philosophies, we're looking at asking questions. And in the philosophy of ethics, we're asking particular questions such as, you know, what's the right or wrong act? How do I determine which actions are good, which actions are not so good, what actions are right to do, what actions are not right to do? We're also asking questions about value. What is it that we value when we make that choice? If I decide not to give money to somebody, what am I valuing there? Am I valuing my money? Am I valuing my ability to use that money for my own happiness? Am I valuing my ability to use that money for other causes? Am I valuing the hard work I put in to earning that money? If I give the money to somebody, am I valuing their life over something else? Am I valuing their well-being? What should I value? I mean, these are ethical questions. But there's also a question about obligation. So something might be the right thing to do or might be more right than something else to do, but should you do it? Do you have to do it? Is there a moral obligation to do that action. Again, let's imagine we're walking down the road and we see a baby <laughs> there. What we do next is an ethical issue, right? It's an ethical concern. You might ask yourself questions about what is a right action at this point. How do we know what the right action is? Is taking the baby home a right action? Is it a good action? Is feeding the baby to my dog a right action? Why would it be a wrong action? What do I value in this case? Am I valuing the life of the baby? Am I valuing my time by just keep by just me keep on walking past the baby? Um, what do I have to do? Do I have to bring the baby home with me? Do I have to um, uh, tell the, the the police or the authorities or um, uh, am I obligated to to feed the baby to the dog because my dog is starving? These are all philosophical questions that concern ethics. And obviously, we don't have to go to the extremes of babies and feeding them to dogs. 
to think about ethics, right? I mean, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and there are ethical concerns all around us with regards to how to deal and live in this pandemic. In particular, you know, you can think about wearing masks and how divisive this issue has become. And in many ways, we can take a look at whether or not one should or be obligated to wear a mask and see all of the same sorts of questions we looked at earlier. What's the right thing to do? If I choose to wear it or not to wear it, what am I valuing here? You know, a lot of the debate has to do with freedom and rights versus, you know, the well-being of other people and keeping our community safe and the question of obligation. Do I have to wear one? Maybe it is a good thing to do, but am I obligated to do it? These are ethical concerns, right? These are ethical issues. These are all questions that we ask in the philosophy of ethics. Now, this term ethics, we can see maybe originate from Aristotle, an ancient Greek philosopher who was a student of Plato, who we've learned about in our class, uh, who himself was a student of Socrates, who we've also talked about in our class. And Aristotle looked at his predecessors, Plato and Socrates, um, and noticed that they would ask these sorts of questions too. So Aristotle gave it a name. This sort of inquiry into living the good life, you know, and trying to think about right action. He says, okay, I'll call that um, ethos, right? And this is where we get the term ethics. So if you are looking and thinking about this baby scenario, how would you even know what the right thing to do is? I mean, what would you, uh, what would you lean on as a source for knowing the answers to this question? For a lot of us, it's just our moral intuitions, right? It's just kind of what feels like the right thing. And sometimes this is obvious. Like you see a baby and, and to you, it's like really obvious. You should like take the baby and find a safe place for it. It's like really obvious to you. It feels obvious that you should not feed it to your dog. Just like maybe it might feel obvious that you should not just punch old people just for no reason. Well, in philosophy, we take a look at, you know, ethical dilemmas, thought experiments to get a sense for our, uh, our ethical intuitions, our moral intuitions, and to maybe see them a bit more clearly. This is a famous moral dilemma, an ethical dilemma. Imagine you are seeing a trolley. Now, let's make it easier. Let's imagine you are seeing a train coming down the tracks. And um, you notice that up ahead, uh, the train seems to be headed straight towards five people tied to the tracks. Now, the people are really far away from you, so you can't just like run down and try to untie them. And the train is like really loud. You can't just like yell to the, con to the person and the engineer of the train to stop. But you do notice that there is a lever that's right next to you. So you could pull the lever and divert the train away from the five people. But then you look down that track and you notice that there is a person, a single person, tied down on that track. Again, too far away from you to run over to untie them. What do you do? Do you allow the train to continue where it's going to run over the five people? Or do you pull the lever, diverting the train, and just killing one person? This is the famous trolley problem. And it is often used to give students and people in general a sense for their moral intuitions. So what does your moral intuition say? What would you do? instinctually. Okay, let's change the scenario a little bit. Instead of you being near a switch, right? Instead of you being near a lever, uh, near a lever, let's say there's no lever. Instead, you are walking over a footbridge, right? Where underneath the bridge is the tracks. And you notice that the train is headed right towards the five people. So no switch, you can't, you can't pull a lever to divert the train, but 
you notice that next to you is a really large man. So large, in fact, that you know, that you know that if you push the man over the footbridge, he'll land on the track and slow down the train enough to ensure that it will not run over the five people. What would you do? Would you just stand there and allow the train to run over the five people? Or would you just give the guy a little nudge? Just enough so that he tumbles over the footbridge onto the track, guaranteeing that the train doesn't run over the five. However, yeah, you probably guarantee that that man's going to die. How does this intuitive sense for what you would do here differ from the previous example? If you think about it, do you have some sense of your reasoning for why you would either pull the lever or not versus push the man over or not? Is there any conflict within that reasoning? A question to ask yourself is, is if there's a difference, is the difference purely emotional? Is the difference purely intuitive rather than rational? What if I were to tell you that in this situation, when you had the lever, the person, the single person that's on the track is your mom or your son or daughter. Would that change what you would do? Or what if I told you that the five people um, that are on the track are all murderers? Or what if I told you, no, they're not all murderers. They're just all friends of yours. Do any of those things change what you would do? And is that purely emotional or is that rational why you would choose to do what you do? So the question we want to ask ourselves at this point is, should your intuition and emotions be the basis for your sense of right and wrong? Should your intuition and emotion be the basis for what you, how you act in the world? If we take a look, there are some behaviors that we see people do based upon intuition and emotion that we think are appalling. You know, whether it's shooting an unarmed person because we have this emotional reaction when we see them that they could be dangerous, even though there's no reason to believe that they are. Or to get riled up and so emotional that we turn a protest into a violent riot. Oftentimes we act out of emotions and just based upon what we feel like doing without really thinking clearly about it. And that leads to behaviors that we would. You know, on second thought, go, man, that is really messed up. We've just gone through a presidential election, and some people are so emotionally riled up because of the results that they are threatening um, voter officials and sending them messages, you know, death threats. Is it good to act out of emotion and intuition? Is it good to base our ethics off of that? Well, Socrates says what we should do is we should use moral reasoning, not just emotion and what we feel like, but we should think about it. And in fact, the answers to our ethical questions, he says we can find those answers and we should find those answers based upon reasoning, based upon rational thought. And that's what we'll be doing for the rest of this week, is taking a look at various ways people have tried to come up with um, uh, ethical philosophies based off of reason to determine answers to those questions we posed earlier. So what would you do? What would you do when faced with this situation? Notice the question of what you should do, what you ought to do is based upon the belief that free will exists. 
what if it didn't, right? What if free will doesn't exist? What should you do? Does that question need, that question doesn't even make sense, right? If free will doesn't exist, which means does ethics even exist if free will doesn't exist? Does ethical blame, you know, moral blame even exist if there's no free will? So what should you do with regards to the pre-crime program? Should you support it or should you not support it? What are the ethical concerns, ethical issues that you'd have to think about in order to come to your decision? Throughout this week, we'll be learning about different philosophies that try to use reason to justify our actions. And you could use those to justify what you would choose to do in this case. Uh, for this week's Flipgrid assignment, I'd like you to share your initial thoughts on the ethical issues you think about and what you would do. Would you support it or would you not?